Well, we're talking about Jesus Christ here on uh, Tack Room Devotional. I'm Keith Brown. What we've done is gone back to the basics. We looked at the Bible. We looked at God the Father. And now we're looking at God the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We talked about on Monday, we talked about his deity. Yesterday, we talked about his humanity. Today, I want to touch on the fact that he um, was conceived by a virgin. We want to talk about his virgin birth. And you can look that up in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 35, and read that whole story, which I'm sure you've already read. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ is without parallel in human history. In other words, nobody else has done this. Well, isn't that just like God? He wants to make sure you and I know that this truly is God and of God, and it's not a, a man-made thing, right? It was by the virgin birth that God became man, one perfect person, but two natures. Now think about this. Again, we're talking about the supernatural here. We're not talking about, you know, just the common man. We're talking about the way God does things. He had two natures, 100% God, 100% man, humanity. One nature being that of Almighty God, the other being that of man, man without sin, okay? Uh, again, he was tempted with everything that you and I are tempted with, but he did not sin. The union of the two natures became the God-man, Jesus Christ. Okay? I hope this all makes sense. So let's look at this virgin birth. It begins clear back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The one to defeat Satan was to be born of the seed of a woman. Remember, again, it, it's spoken that far back. That's how, you know, this plan of God, it, it talks about the fact that the plan of God of, for salvation was before the foundation of the earth. This is not just something that, you know, uh-oh, this happened, now we got to do this, and we try to adjust and make arrangements. No, God is in control. This is his perfect plan. And so it's spoken of in Genesis chapter 3. The one to defeat Satan. Again, was the seed of the woman. This is a biological myth, uh, miracle. There is not seed of a woman. Okay? Again, there it speaks of the seed of the woman, but there isn't a seed of the woman. The seed is passed on by the man. But once again, we're talking about the supernatural here. From this we are to understand that one was to be born of a woman without human father. No, because the father was the Holy Spirit. In, in, again, in Luke it says, And the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and you shall conceive a child. See, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah then also prophesied that a virgin shall uh, uh, conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. That comes from Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. So once again, now look it. This is prophecy. This happened years, years, like 400 years, 500 years before Jesus Christ was born. And here Isaiah is prophesying. Well, then again, Isaiah prophesies in Isaiah 9, verse 6 through 7, that says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And, you know, you've read that passage or heard that passage during Christmas. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, of which there's no end, and so forth. This means that God gave his only begotten son who was with him from eternity. And the child Jesus was born of a virgin. God gave his son unto us. Amen. His only begotten son. And then finally, according to prophecy, he was born in Bethlehem. That is, comes from Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Joseph was with Mary and went up to Bethlehem to be taxed and to, be, uh, and to fulfill prophecy. That's in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. So we see Joseph taking Mary and going to Bethlehem, and yet it was spoken clear back in the Old Testament by the prophet Micah that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> It, to me, I mean, how, how can you deny Jesus Christ as Messiah when all these prophecies are fulfilled in him? Okay, I, think, I hope you got something out of that. Uh, I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.